Hello, beautiful friends. I'm doing a quick video to help a student who just asked me a question online. I figured why not do it on Instagram Live. Is a fashion student from my Freedom Fashion Program. If you don't know, I have a whole suite of online courses and programs for fashion design. Um, I taught uh, 20 years in Parsons School of Design, fashion program, fashion design, and illustration. And now I've created all my own online courses and programs for art and fashion. And definitely focused on diversity, body positivity, and really telling stories about our lives and our desires um, in a really affirming fashion world. So this is, this is called a... A template. This is like a pre-drawn version of a body. <laughs> it doesn't even have shoulders or arms. Not not the greatest thing, but I'm using this so that we can just zero in on the actual on the actual neckline. So here's the thing when you're drawing collars. The student who was asking you, how do I draw collars? Collars are really tricky, you guys, because they involve wrapping around the neck, right? So I'm gonna take this um neck here and I'm going to add like a little bit of a head to it so that it becomes even more realistic. Now here's the thing, when you're drawing a collar, there's all kinds of collars, right? There's jacket collars, there's shawl collars, there are, if you want to get, build your vocabulary of fashion words and things, I highly recommend uh, Pattern Making for Fashion Design by Helen Joseph Armstrong. It's a beautiful reference book plus technical book with great drawings in it that will help you with all of this. But let's just talk with, about like a classic shirt collar because that's what I noticed my student was having trouble with. Um, and I do go in depth into collars in all of my design courses because it's such a relevant and important thing. There's so much going on in a collar. First thing you want to think about is forget about the collar itself and just think about when she's wearing it. What does the silhouette of the garment look like? So usually there's a point somewhere, right? Like we wanna define what's the actual part where her skin stops showing. So let's look at a shirt collar. Some shirt collars, like they kind of point in on center front, center front line. Okay, so let's, let's look at one like that because the student who asked me, that's what she was drawing, okay? Now, in a shirt like that, we know we have shoulder, armhole, just trying to like give us some orientation, right? But now here's the thing. There's a few things to talk, think about. And like in all my courses as well, we're going to draw light lines. I like to draw, I like to use what I call x-ray vision. <laughs> draw light lines so that I'm able to draw all the layers of what's going on before I draw my clean lines. I'll show you what I mean because it's really hard to draw a collar without thinking that way. So first thing I wanted to find is like, what's the dip or you know, where's the V? If maybe there's no V, if it's like a bit Mandarin or band collar, it might just be smooth, but I'm gonna do this little point down. Then you gotta think about her neck, right? Is this collar wedged you know, straight up against a neck or is there some space next to her neck, which would certainly be more comfortable, right? So if I'm adding space next to her neck, I can extend these two lines. I'm using pencil because pencil gives you the freedom to go from dark to light. And, and you know, that's, that's really helpful in all fashion drawing. Okay, so now we have a little bit of space next to her neck on either side. We also get to think about, okay, where's the, okay, this is the neckline. This is where her skin stops showing. In fact, I'm gonna shade in her skin so you can see the garment she's wearing as separate from her, okay? Now, there's actually a neckline on the garment. So sometimes you're trying to draw clothes and you're not understanding clothes a lot yet. Look at what's in your closet. So a shirt with a classic basic collar is also gonna have a neckline. And this is where the collar is actually stitched into the shirt, okay? And to take that further, I'm gonna point out to you that buttons are generally exactly on the center front line. Let's put some buttons here on center front. The center of the button is on the center line and the, the, 
the fold over the, of the placket, it actually extends, you know, off to one side of center front. Let's say we're doing a shirt that's like this. Could be anything you want, okay. Ooh. Okay. Now, notice I use a heavier line to show where I have separate layers. Yeah, so it gives like a 3D feeling. Another tip is that when I draw buttons, I don't draw the whole circle. It gives it a more 3D feeling. Okay, now, we have our neckline sketch in boots just lightly because guess what? We're not gonna see the neckline once she has a collar on, okay? And this extension from center front to the edge that opens, folds and unfolds, and remember there's also an underlap on the other side, yeah? But like we can kind of blend the top edge of the collar into the extension from center front. And just remember that there's also an extension on the other side, but it's underneath, so we don't see it. Um, I'm still keeping this line light right here because it's gonna get covered up by the collar itself. So we've defined our overlap, our neckline seam, which I'm just keeping light and soft, the look and silhouette edges of the collar where the, her skin stops showing and the garment begins. We establish a distance from the neck. Now, when we establish distance between the neck and the collar, we get this little hook shape. Why do we get a little hook? Because it's literally, I'm gonna do a dotted line. You know, we don't see the collar in the back, right? And you're also thinking about how, how tall is the stand of that collar? Is it an inch? Is it an inch and a half? Is it two inches? Usually not two inches, but let's just say, like in this one, it actually looks quite high. Um, so you define how high is your back collar. A lot of people draw the back collars too rounded, like this. I don't ever draw back collars like that. I think someone once told me not to, and I, so I never do. Because your back neckline on your patterns even is concave. So when I draw a back neckline, I, I dip it. For example, uh, here's a back collar. Back collars are so easy to draw, right? <laughs> back view. Okay, but now we have to define um, you know, how angled is the collar and how tall before it hits the shoulder. I'm putting a little cross mark here just to define for you where that collar is sitting on the shoulder line. And then usually your collars, the flaps start at center front. So it's up to you where you put those flaps, I can't believe it. Hi, Karen, I love you, I miss you. Um, you know, just make sure that you're doing the same thing on each side, so it's like a mirror image on each side. Sweet pea, my heart runneth over, Karen. And then you can just join. You know, it's up to you because at this point you're designing your collar. So you can make these edges curved, they could be scalloped. <laughs> They could be, you know, and you can make adjustments at any point to your collar because you're the designer. The point is to start with nice light, light lines so that you can evolve your design and make different decisions as you go. And that's the basic of how to draw a collar. So let's say I was doing a flat sketch, not on the model. So let's pretend her head isn't there. I'm gonna turn my hand this way so that I can use the nice natural arc of my hand Draw a nice, smooth, concave back. So now, and then I would put a little shading in here so that I, the front and the back separate visually. Yeah, and it is gonna, you're gonna notice like this side and this side, they should be, it's a symmetrical shirt, but one side's gonna look smaller because you have an overlap on your center front placket. You might wanna add, you know, stitching or a little buttonhole effects the collar here you may have the the um neckline seam peaking between the two collar um, between the collar opening you want to make sure you have a balanced distance from center front to each collar point <laughs> and that's that i'm totally dying to chat with you
Karen. And I'm making this for, I'm going to put this on YouTube later today, so it's sort of dry and boring. Feel free to add a collar of any shape you want. I'm going all classic today. Or any other details. Maybe I'm going to put like some kind of puff sleeve on this shirt, make it kind of different. I don't know. <laughs> You're the best. By the way, Karen, I look at the picture, the illustration you did of me every single day, hanging right here in my home. Um, and that's the basic rundown of how to draw the collar. So I'm gonna post this and I'm gonna send it to my student who was asking for this video. Um, just to remind you, not these templates, but other templates are all available on my website. When you subscribe, you get like a, Tremendous packet of tools. So these dolls, uh, croquis templates, I they come in many sizes in my packet that you get um, so that you can design onto a doll. But you also get model drawing videos. I understand, Karen, but that's fine. Like, I totally get that. I totally get that, Karen. Um, I'm doing a lot of new things too. Uh, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, so at, at fashionillustrationtribe.com, you can download all these resources. When you subscribe, you'll get all kinds of gift goodies. I'm Laura Volpentesta on YouTube, and um, the course that's being promoted until midnight today with Early Bird is actually my How to Draw Faces course, and that's linked in the bio. And you get one free coaching session with me when you sign up. So that's really exciting too. And um, that's the deal. <laughs> now that I've completed my instructional part, I would love to chat with you, Karen. I'm sitting here in my bikini and I'm like, should I really flip the camera? I have no idea what I look like right now. <laughs> Are you at the beach house? I'm going to text you. I love you. Thanks for joining me, guys. Bye.